powered. And now all we need to do is set up a, uh, an RC circuit that um, is within range of hearing. So, and I just, you know, I'm sort of used to doing this. So I know that um, this would be a pretty good choice. 0.01 microfarad capacitor. So um, this chip is a hex Schmidt trigger chip. So it there are pairs of, of pins. So this can make six oscillators essentially. And remember, all this is doing um, is it's like when this when this pin is high, then this pin is low. And when this pin is low, then this pin is high. So all we're doing is we're using a, a resistor and a capacitor to create a flux, uh, an oscillation and which will flip-flop that pin and create a square array. That's all we're doing. So I'm going to take this and um, insert one leg into ground and the other leg into pin number one of the two of the of the this pair. I could do this in any pair, um, uh, but I'm going to start here. Uh, and then a resistor. So we need basically something um, along the lines of a 10k resistor. Will probably will probably get us in range. And again, I just this, just know this from from having done a lot of it. I mean, it might be a little bit high. We might have to play with this a little bit. Um, but this should this should create an oscillation. We shouldn't really be hearing that yet. We're getting feedback inside of the um, thing. Okay, there's our oscillator. So I've got now it's the same pin. So with the res sorry, I, I, I skipped a step. I put the resistor between um, pins one and two. So pin one has the, the capacitor going to ground, and it also has one half of the resistor, and the other half is going into pin two. And pin two is also the output. It's the flip-flopping side. Um, and so it's basically creating a square wave of this particular frequency, and the amplifier is amplifying it. And if I do that, why is that happening? because my fingers are like resistors. And so when I touch my fingers between, I'm, I'm essentially, I'm putting in, par in series, no, in parallel, I guess, with this resistor, another resistor, which is my fingers. So I can actually like do that. Um, if I use, if we use a, like a, one of these, let's see if we have a lower, we can make a lower pitch because it'll, Okay, here's a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. So this should make a much lower tone. There we go. That'll sound better through the spring reverb. Okay, so there's our low tone. Now, let me show you one other thing about the amp, um, or two other things about it. This amp is, as I say, I'm, I'm not lying when I say it's a cheap amp. Uh, it works really well, but um, it's not, it's noisy, and it, and it can easily go into self-oscillation. One way to prevent that, and this is just a modification to the circuit to make it a little bit more robust, but you don't have to do this. Pin number uh, seven um, is a pin that you can, if you, if you basically, if you put a capacitor between it and ground of about 0.01 microfarads, or just a, basically a small, but that's usually a good value. That will, that may prevent the circuit from going into oscillation. It's not anyway, so it's not going to affect it if I plug it in. But you, you may, I'm only mentioning this because you may see some diagrams that include that and just know that that's actually optional. How do you know it's going into um, self oscillation? Um, it will start, it will start doing funny things like, uh, actually it was, remember when it was making sound before? Right. It, that's what it was doing. Okay. It was os It was going into self oscillation. Um, and sometimes when you're building a complex circuit, um, and it's kind of weird and feeding back, the, the, it can freak the, the amp out. I don't understand exactly why it happens, but I definitely know that it happens. Another modification to the amp is if you insert a capacitor of about, well, this is fine, 4.7 microfarads, anything around like 1 to 10, maybe a little more of this one, uh, between pin 8 and pin 1, that's essentially like um, what you would do if you wanted to amplify a, a microphone where you needed more amplification. That's a gain, is what that is. You can actually set up a gain. You can do this with a, with a pot as well and, and make a gain pot. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can make a gain. But basically, if you just insert this between pin 1 and, or pin 8 and pin 1, it will largely increase and it will also distort, in many cases, the signal, which is awesome. 
<laughs> um, and so sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually like include this in the circuit but not connect it here and, and uh, hook up a little switch um, or even a couple of electrodes and then I can use my body capacitance to sort of bring that in and out and it can create some kind of cool effects. Okay, so um, anyway, that's, that's the amp. That's it. That's all there is to making an amp. Uh, what we want to do now, I guess, is... Um, is is try our little spring reverb out. This it's not gonna a square wave is not gonna be that interesting through it, but I I really wanted to use the spring reverb, so <laughs> so I'm just gonna build another amp um, to amplify the actual spring. So we'll put this in here and maybe actually just for fun we'll let me make it loud. Except I can't talk, I'll do that later. Um, okay, so again, I need to connect this amp up. This amp, by the way, draws very little power. That's another nice thing about it. So that's why I like to use them for these solar power things, because they just don't they just don't require a lot of power. That's generally the kind of amp you use for your. Well, I I use I I'll tell you what I use. I use that, or I use this these days. Yeah, um, or I buy, or I get something that I didn't make myself. Like, like that's, in, that's what's in the Hemi, and I didn't make those amps. I could never make those amps. Um, we'll never say never, I guess, but... Okay, so I'm going to basically do exactly the same thing with this amp. I'm going to hook up pins 3 and 4 to ground, uh, hook up pin 8 to power. Um, let's see, uh, we, need, we need another capacitor for the output, it doesn't really matter. That must, this is another 100 microfarad, perfect. Stick that there. Is that going? Yeah. Um, now, is there a, you want to hand me that big fat speaker? Yeah. Um, by the way, speaking of speakers, it doesn't really, I'm, I'm using these, this is an 8 ohm speaker. Uh, this is a 4 ohm speaker, I think. It doesn't ma make much difference, by the way. Um, okay, so I'm going to connect this to the other amp. So ground, power, and then what I want to connect up to that amp is the actual contact microphone. Now, uh, I, I'm going to have feedback issues if I'm not careful. Uh, well, we'll just let that happen and correct it. But So this is going to go uh, to ground one half, and the other half is going to go to the input of the amp. And, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I'm not hearing anything. We're not hearing anything. That we hear something. Okay, let's just um, make sure that maybe this is the wrong with the chip. So I'll replace this with this. Oh yeah. Okay, that works. So let's try. So we know the speaker works. Oh, uh, yeah, so something's weird about... I, oh, no? Oh, I don't have input right now. Uh, see, I'm ac actually expecting this chip not to work because... Yeah, so it isn't working. So... Let's try another chip. The reason I believe it's possible that there's a dead chip is that um, it's 
sometimes 